Welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibade with the Brain and Body Foundation. Well, we're still in the US and I gotta tell you, this, the numbers are increasing astronomically. Uh, last, I believe last week, we crossed the 350,000 mark and uh, experts are saying this, that number is going to increase exponentially. Why? Because there's been a lot of travel in the last few day, weeks uh, over the Christmas. In fact, the numbers are startling. 85 million people traveled for Christmas and New Year. So think about that. 85 million people all over the United States all going to see their relatives and friends and everything. That same number is going to travel back. So it's just 85 million one way. So we're looking at almost 150 million traveling. That's a wonderful environment. Perfect storm for super spread. And so this, <laughs> we're looking at a, a much worse case of COVID-19 this the next months ahead. And if you remember Dr. Baramasi, who is the pulmonologist we had on a couple of times, I believe he was on last week. He also was saying that uh, his ICU beds are completely full. So uh, please, let's not take anything for granted. And on the show today, I have the unique honor of welcoming the enemy presidents of the, the president of the Nigeria Medical Association, overall president, not state president, overall president. And let me quickly introduce him. His name is Professor Innocent Uja. He's a professor of obstetrics and gynecology and consultant surgeon. He is also, in addition to being the president, he is also the vice chancellor of the Federal University of Medical Science, Otupo, Benue State. I don't know how he does it, but prof. You are very, very welcome to the show today. Thank you very much, and a happy new year to you. We Thank you, sir. Happy the new year will be better than last year. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So we have a lot to discuss, and um, with, with regards to COVID-19. First of all, I just would like, like an overview. What's your perspective of how COVID-19 has been handled in Nigeria? and especially from your own med, uh, as your, your position as the head of the medical association. Well, um, you know and you are aware that um, COVID-19 came like a bomb. Nobody was expecting it. Nobody was prepared for it. Not even in Europe and America, um, because what we are seeing clearly is a disease that nobody knows anything about. Right. Um, all we know is that it, it affects has of symptoms similar to malaria, and then of course becomes much increased, uh, infecting the respiratory system, and then you know spread to the whole body. But and also kills. Apart from that, we do not know the epidemiology of the disease. We don't know mm -hmm. how. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't know where. We don't know when. And uh, we are not given opportunity to prepare. So Nigeria. Mm -hmm did not prepare for this, like many other countries. Uh, however, when it came, the president took um, um, a political commitment, a political will to set up a PTF, that's a presidential task force on COVID-19 prevention and containment. But I think that, that is the best, that up to that, that is the best we, we had. Um, we have people like Professor Tomori who have been there for years issues of the yellow fever containment, issues of Ebola. I was there, I was acting co-chair. I was co-chair of Ebola treatment research group when I was director general of Nigeria Institute of Medical Research. We trained 250 Nigerians that went to, to help to contain Ebola in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. I'm not sure these people were involved. And what we are saying that there should have been mixed for effective national response. 
But what we saw was political composition. I'm not saying they're not doing their best, but whether their best is good enough is another thing. We need to be very, very frank with ourselves. We have capacity, we have human capacity. And I'm happy that um, I was told that there was a technical committee that was eventually set up by the Federal Minister of Health, which, was, which is headed by Professor Tomori. But well, you need to interface with him and uh, know that in fact nothing, little or nothing is being done by that committee. So we need to be more serious in my opinion. I think we need more commitment and uh, we need to ensure that we get things off going. Uh, those who are there, of course, we are, are doing their own best, but we need the synergy of opinions, of ideas, of experience. Uh, so I think that that, is, that would have made, yes. So, so Prof, in your opinion, what specific things do you see that should be done that are not being done? In other words, what's the way forward? Well, uh, what specific things are clearly yeah. missing? First of all, the research component is missing. By now, yeah. where Nigerians are saying that they don't believe that there's COVID, what have we done to find out why do they, why are they saying that there's no COVID, there's no COVID? It's a quick research question, which we can quickly answer and use that as an instrument of dissemination and dis dissemination of information and education and sensitization. But we have no such a thing. We do not have any research component to monitor as far as I can see, I may be wrong, but I'm yet to be told. We have not got a research component that monitors and evaluates what we are doing so that we can assess how well we are doing, what we could do better. We don't know when this COVID is going to go away. Even then, even if that's not the case, we should be able to use this as an instrument of um, rejigging our health system. And we mm -hmm. will see that every day we are told that we have 1,000 people tested positive. How many people, how many tests were done? What uh, was the denominator? It's not enough to say that you have 500 or you have 200. Now, how many tests did you do to get those, to so that we can get a percentage and determine the trend? That's scientific, it's not political. Right. Yeah, so right. those are, we are not seeing that from NCDC. And I expect that the Director General of NCDC should be should have come up with that. I've been shouting this for years. I mean, not for years, for months, since I became president in May. We need to have a de denominator. At one point, they say uh, the curve, the, the curve is flattened, uh, flattening. How can a, a curve flatten? Where well, you don't even tell us the test, the number of tests you do, and the number that are positive. That's the determinant. And you calculate the percentage and draw your map and see how you can get. So what we are saying is that yes, they are doing their best but they could do better. Because one, the, the, the issue of non-acceptance of the fact that there's COVID, there is a lot of disinformation. We, uh, we are told that we have to use uh, the NCDC protocol. The compliance is very poor, i.e. the use of face mask, the hand washing and the use of sanitizers, uh, distance, uh, social distancing, that has failed. Social distancing has failed. That's the truth. You go to marketplaces, you go to the community, nothing much is happening. And I also believe that the national orientation agencies should do better. They should do better. The national orientation agencies should do better. Because okay. at the moment, uh, the message is not going to happen. And people are just doing whatever they want to do. It's a very right. serious pandemic that, in fact, we are lucky. And maybe our prayers are working in Nigeria. <laughs> Otherwise, they, they want to see they want to see dead bodies littered all over the place. I don't see dead bodies Hope, are not chicken. Uh, hopefully, they are, they are not hopefully that will not happen. So, hopefully that will not happen, Prof. We have to offer. Yeah. Yes, we definitely. Offer because we have an opportunity. Yeah. So, Prof, so Prof, we're going to take a quick break now, uh, a one minute break, and then we'll, we'll be right back. So, folks, stay tuned. All right. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Professor Uja, who is the president of the Nigerian Medical Association. And we've been talking about some of the challenges of dealing with COVID-19, um, the research, the government interplay, and what needs to be done. Right now in this segment, we want to talk about the medical doctors who, who are all under his purview as the president of the NMA. 
Prof, let's talk about the challenges. What do you see as good? What do you see needs to be improved? Well, thank you very much. I think the first thing that is good is the commitment of the doctors, their okay. dedication, their drive, a drive to support government to contain this national, this, uh, this pandemic as part of the national response. That's a good aspect that uh, we can say. The doctors are very committed and some other health workers, uh, they are prepared. As you know, when we started, they brought some Chinese people, very non-specific people that uh, we do not know. And the Nigerian Medical Association kicked against it. And that was the right thing to do. Here, because we have the capacity, the commitment, all we need is an enabling environment. And uh, we're talking about an enabling environment, when we started, you recall that uh, the issue, first of all, uh, many of our advices were not taken. At the point when the first case came on the 27th of February, 2020, the Nigerian Medical Association called the government and advised the government and advocated with the government that they needed to close borders because it was an importation and that could have broken the transmission chain. But there was a lot of delay dialing until it became very obvious that they needed to uh, um, close borders and it came a little bit too little too late. Uh, and we started, we had no, I think basically it was Lagos and Abuja that had the PCR machines for molecular testing. Uh, but the good thing is that the government responded, even if late, late, uh, a bit late, they responded by providing many PCR machines and training uh, the laboratory uh, the scientists and the pathologists to do the test. So right now we have over 70 uh, PCR machines courtesy of COVID-19. But that, uh, we can't say that that's enough for Nigeria because we're a very large population. Uh, we also feel we are faced with uh, the inadequate supply or inconsistent supply of personal protection equipment. And it took the resident doctors uh, or, you know, um, decision to go on strike and totally unnecessary because we expected that the doctors and the government should have been on the same page. I mean, the doctors must be protected. There's no two about that. Even the patients, other patients coming to the hospitals to be protected. Doctors needed to be protected, you know. And apart from training uh, for infection prevention and control, they need to have their equipment. Please. Unfortunately, it took the, the resident doctors, uh, you know, the threat and actually took to to, to strike to strike action before the government responded. But I think that it's much better now. I think that planning is very, very important. We must have stakeholders meeting where we talk, our, talk to ourselves and talk to the, to the president cannot do everything. That's why he has all sorts of ministers and advisors and the rest. And they should help him. It should help him because the way the Nigerian health system is going, if we do not learn anything from COVID, then we will have failed forever. We didn't learn anything from from Ebola, we ought to have learned from Ebola and use this to the advantage in the containment right. of, 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 of COVID. But unfortunately, right. we have not learned. Anything. And if we right. do not document and learn from this, we would have failed. And it would have been a failed opportunity. I, I think that part about documenting and learning is critical, absolutely critical. And sharing that information across, not just the experts, but also across uh, the, the, the public as well, which is what we're also trying yes. to do with with this show. Doc, we're going to, on that note, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back to talk about some more things. Thank you so much. Hold on. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Professor Uja, who is the president of the Nigerian Medical Association. And we've been having a really, really good discussion on um, COVID-19 in Nigeria and uh, the, the place doctors, House officers, resident doctors have to play in, in, in this whole uh, issue. Thank God, Prof, thank God we haven't had it as bad as the US, I have to say, because um, capacity wise, we would have been in serious trouble. But thank God. We don't know why we are in, in this state, but somehow it's, it's been good. And I know the numbers probably a little conservative compared to what is actually happening, because as you and I know, we've had several 
cases and uh, reports of people having strokes and maybe not getting to the hospital in time and dying before they can be recorded. So we know that that's going on. However, it is certainly not as bad as what we had envisaged. So uh, there's a lot to be grateful for. Let's talk about homegrown remedies. What, what is uh, what's the research saying? What are we finding out? What can be done? What are we seeing that, that is effective to, uh, in the treatment of COVID-19 and probably even in the prevention of COVID-19? Well, I, I think um, it will be difficult to say to anybody that this is what we have to ensure that we treat that, that cures or I mean treats um, COVID-19. I think mm -hmm. one of the things that the Fed, and um, I, will, I must be happy, I must be grateful to the PMD of uh, UCA, who first of all came out with some of the things he used when he got that. Team inhalation, which I believe works. Um, the use of azithromax, hydroxychloroquine, zinc, vitamin C. These are the ones that, with the, and of course the administration of oxygen as required. So these are some of the things we, we did not documented you know, strictly through research yet, but uh, we will see this uh, when they are published. But from mm -hmm. an anecdotal mm -hmm. report, uh, these are some of the things that are being used. And um, I, I think when you say uh, we, are, we are lucky, I think we, we must thank God because um, we don't have the work capacity mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to respond if it had come the way it is in the US and the UK. We wouldn't have, but in this case, this is the only pathology disease that spares Africans. Every other thing that is bad is for Africa, <laughs> and you can see that within nine months, they have hurriedly uh, got saw what would look like vaccines. In fact, they say they have vaccines. Is because it's affecting them. That is response to their people. That's the responsibility they have to their people. If it right. were yeah. Africans like Ebola. And last and last fever, we have not got any vaccine to them because it doesn't right. bother them, it doesn't affect them. But we can't blame them because it's not their priority. Right. We should take up our responsibility for our own disease and conditions. But the reality you can see now that is affecting the white people, Europe and America, uh, they are struggling very, very hard to ensure that they get the vaccines. We have been fighting on uh, issues of HIV for over 10 something years, we've not got the vaccine. Now, because this one is killing them, they are responding appropriately. And that is the right thing to do. And we should take lessons from them that what affects us, we should look at very seriously, not to wait for them because their priorities are different. Our tropical disease conditions are not the same with their own and we shouldn't wait for them. And that was why I was saying that when, and you can't fault NCDs in this case, or the PGF, when the uh, COVID came uh, at the beginning, we're not sure whether to use, in fact, everyone, we're not sure whether we're to, to use a face mask or not. We're waiting for WHO. WHO doesn't have the capacity in terms of clinical, it's, in the sense, it's what people do in their various places that they put together. But eventually we're able to now say that we, have, we can use Face mask and the time, you know, the time lag. If we knew whether it was going to be good or not, we say, okay, our own use face mask because of this. Probably would have interrupted this, but we are waiting for WHO. And I think that that is not right. We should also yeah. take into cognizance some of the capacity that we have. So right. the reality is that yeah. we 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 need to document. We need to document our experiences. We need to document our failures. We need to document our successes. When we harness this, we learn for the future because other pandemics or epidemics will come. Up to now, we have not sorted out lesser fever. Only about two months ago, we had avalanche of yellow fever conditions, killing people anyhow in the Southeast and in Benue. So it is something that we need to sustain the public health response to communicable diseases and emerging communicable diseases. Unfortunately, once this finishes, Everybody will close doors and close shop, and that is it. Instead of now setting up a research team, a research team to continue to continually bring out information so that we can see how well we will go. It will just, when you talk, you say there's no money there. You, would, you must, we must invest in health. Yes. But we have not, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, you and I will not have capacity to, to be appointed to a place of decision. 
because I know you know what to do. But you see, knowing what to do is different from doing what should be done. You don't have capacity. Like we don't have power of enforcement. We can only advocate, we can only advise. But we know that if you put crack teams of Nigerians, whether Europe, America, diaspora, and bring them together in Nigeria, they will, they will do wonders. Absolutely. But, you see, all, you know, envy, jealousy, politics, all sorts of things are there. Who is it? Where is this person coming from? Where is he? Who is his father? Who is that? That will not work for Nigeria. That's the truth. We look. That's why uh, Euro, I mean, America, get the best brains. They don't care where you come from. Once you are good, they will, they will, they will harvest you. And you work for them. And they get I think we should learn from a country, a country like America. Absolutely. So, Prof, Prof, we have about one and a half minutes left, and so we, we need to we need to round up. What are your final few words that we have for Nigerians and Nigerian doctors? Yeah. Yeah, but with the issue of vaccine, even we have a, so the supply chain to keep the vaccines at seven minus seventy or sixty degrees. Are we ready for it? <laughs> because if you go to the bush where there's no light, yeah, you, know, they, you know, it will, it, it, the yeah. efficiency will go down. So we, there are, there's so much to do. It's not exactly. enough to bring the vaccines. They, are, they, they train, you have to train people. And I think if we need to go back to the drawing board and see I, how I, well I, we can. I, I think also I think also we need to do another session to, 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 to go into, into depth in some, some of these other areas. Because there's a lot to be done, especially like what you said. I think that's really valuable. That whole part of, of research, documentation, sharing of this of this information. I'm I'm really surprised for you to say that we're we're not doing that. I thought we were doing that, quite frankly. But, but well, I'm not aware. I'm not. They may be doing it, but I'm not, I'm not aware. If it's doing it in the cupboard, then we'll not see it. Research is not done in the cupboard. It must. Be, it needs to be more robust. I agree with you, yes. Professor Uja. Yes. Thank you so so much, sir, for this for taking your time to educate us on what's going on. Uh, we hope we can get you on later, uh, and uh, thank you for your continual work of service to our doctors and to our nation. Uh, God bless, sir. Stay 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 safe, please. Stay safe. We need you. <laughs> and thank folks, you uh, thank you. thank you, sir. Thank you thank very you. much. And happy New Year again, Liz. Let 2021 be a better year than the disaster of 2020. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, thank you. So, folks, thanks for joining us. Remember, your health is in your hands. The more education you have, the more information you have, the better equipped you will be to take charge of your health.